Muntari, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Talk to us about you in Kumase, the clubs that you played before you even got to Qatar. So I would say the I would say the serious team that I was playing for was uh, Glowlamp Academy, which was owned by the former Ghana Blasters player and a legend in Ghana, Mr. Odati Lamte. So that's when I got a chance to move to Qatar. So back home I was playing for Glow Lamp Academy. I mean, I was playing for this club, you know, back then was Al Jesh, which is now like, I wouldn't say cancer, it's mixed with uh, the team that I am now, so that made it Al Duhel. So that's when they saw like the talent that I had and they wanted me to play for, for Qatar. So I would say that's how I, I switched my nationality to Qatar. But at what point did you decide to switch nationality and play for the Qatar national team? I mean, for me, it wasn't like a decision to make because when I left Ghana, I left pretty early when I was like 17. So when I came here, I got a chance early to, you know, like play for the national team and it was a huge thing. I mean, I know for a kid like growing up, like back home in Ghana, it's always our dream to play for the national team and to, to put on the share to represent you know, your country. But when the chance came for me to play for Qatar, I said, why not? Because it was a huge thing, even though like, the World Cup wasn't even announced to be in Qatar. But looking back, I think I've made the right decision. Yeah, I was in, te in terms of decision making, it wasn't that hard. Because when I told you when I left, like, you know, Ghana, nobody knows who Muntari Mohammed was. So in terms of decision making, it was kind of easy. So I took that and then in terms of like getting in, it was, what is it? it was a lot of, you know, up and down, you know, through the federations and stuff and, and thank God we managed to get that, you know, out of the way and now I'm playing for Qatar. You're talking about how you had to switch nationalities and all that and not playing for Ghana but playing for Qatar. Was this financially motivated? It was never financial. It was never financial. I mean, we play football first because we love playing football. Second, because we want to take care of like the people that we want to take care of. And then, I wouldn't say it's financially never because at the end of the day, I mean, who knows? I could have been playing for for Ghana and still be earning much. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't say it's a financial thing. That that's why I switch to play for Qatar, so, yeah. Also, you know, it's a World Cup year, so it's definitely exciting in your country. How does it feel to be playing in the World Cup with another country? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, just football, you know, and we all have to play football. I'm talking about, you know, the football players, it's just football to us and to represent the country that, I wouldn't say it's like my birth country, but, you know, it's a country that now, I feel proud to like call my country aside Ghana, which is you know my birth country and stuff. So to actually get a chance to play for them in the World Cup, it's a huge, huge honor in terms of what they did for me when I came here, how they took care of me, even though I'm not one of their own. And to do that and then to represent them in the huge stage and like in the World Cup, it's a big honor for me. So I'm actually wait, I can't wait for it to start. But how do they treat you here? I mean, I mean, as a football player, we all know what's the worst thing to have during like your career is injury. And I, had, I happened to have like one of the scariest injury in like in football, which is like to, to have a surgery in like a place that is not normal to have a surgery is, is one thing that I was, I would put out there. And for them to like stick with me as one of their own and for me to be here today and to even get a chance to represent them in the World Cup. It's a big thing, so for that I will always hold them in my heart, like, like my country, so yeah. I mean, in terms of everything, in terms of like taking care of me, make sure like whatever I need, they are there for me, my people, my family. So, I mean, for me, that's enough. If you can take care of my family, then it's a guarantee for me to like go a mile for you, you know? Because for me, family always come first. And for them to do that is, I mean, I would do anything for them too, so. That's, that's a big thing for someone to do for anyone in this world, to take care of his or her family, you know, so, yeah. 
You've had some interesting um, moments in the national team. Talk to me about your brilliant moment for this Qatar national team. For me, I was in my first game for Qatar. It was a friendly game against Slovenia. I know it's a friendly, but for me to, on my debut, to score and then to actually win the game was, just, was something huge. And then recently, with the Arab Cup, when I scored, even though we didn't, we didn't pass the semi-final, but to score in that actually game and to see the fans like really enjoying it, that was one thing that was really huge for me, and even till today. Wish we like would have made it to the final, but that's football. Having a brilliant moment with the Qatar national team is one thing that I cannot describe because it's a different feeling. And then hopefully I will have more to give them this coming World Cup and many more games to come in the future. But most importantly, I'm sure a lot of people will be looking up to the Qatar national team. What are the realistic chances of Qatar in this World Cup, looking at the group that you find yourselves in, that is Group A? I mean, I always tell people in football, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, I know like many countries or many teams uh, are saying, oh, Qatar is not a football country. But yeah, we will take our chances. And then looking at our group, I mean, all the groups, there is no easy group. So by looking at our group, I think, I think we have a very good chance of like going to the next stage. That's for sure. As the place, we've been together for like many years and we know each other. It's like a family. So that's why I'm saying we got a fair chance. And then I don't know what other teams are doing, but I know what we are doing, how, are, how we are preparing for the World Cup. And for that, that's what I'm saying, like we have a fair chance to pass through. When you're in Qatar, you know like how the Qatar national team takes take care of their players in terms of camping and, and training and everything. So as a football player, there's, there's nothing you can ask for except for like, you know, good facilities, training. And then, I mean, I know many people have been in Qatar, they've seen like the facilities here preparing for the World Cup. And for us, to actually be part of the players who are actually training in, the, in those facilities and them taking care of us like each and every day. So looking, looking at that, I would say, yeah, we, we really do have like a good chance to, to qualify. And you know, we can't talk about the World Cup without talking about the Black Stars, um, your country of birth. What do you make of the group that the Black Stars are also in and their chances as well? Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is I always watch Ghana's gig. I mean, when Ghana is playing, I'm always watching with my friends and we was having a debate, you know, like, I mean, Ghana is my best country. I still love the country. You know, I always go there like in the summer and then every chance I get, I go home. So like looking at the group that Ghana is in, well, one thing is for sure, I would never count Ghana out, like in terms of anything, even if the team is bad or good, I would never count them out. So I'm hoping and yeah, praying that you Ghana will pass through that group, even though it's not an easy group. So yeah, and then Ghana can get revenge on Uruguay. <laughs> so <laughs> you've spoken about how you love the Black Stars, but why didn't you play for them? If you think you love the national team so much, or if you think you love Ghana so much? I mean, you know, you, I mean, that's life. You know, sometimes you have to leave your family to go to, you know, to be part of other, other family, you know what I'm saying? To, because of like circumstances and what happened like during the way or something. So I still love Ghana. Ghana will always be my country and, and I still have them in my heart no matter what. Yeah, we want. Okay. I need to. Yeah. We need to come to people. <laughs> 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 
Aside what Qatar wants to achieve with this World Cup, the reason why you guys have been um, preparing so hard throughout the year, what do you want to achieve personally? First, I, wanna, I want Qatar to go as far as the weekend, and then football is football. Anything can happen, you know? I can sit here and promise oh, I want to achieve something and then it's not going to happen. But for me, one thing that I really wish for, and I know it's not easy, is for Qatar to be in the final of the World Cup. And then, yeah, that's, that's all I can wish for right now in terms of this World Cup. And aside, maybe play, aside, play against yeah. Ghana. <laughs> maybe really? play against Ghana, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be nice. That would be nice. I mean, to be the best that I can, like personally, to have my great moment. And then, I mean, that would be so nice, you know, being on the big stage and performing well and then you know, back home, your family been, you know, been enjoying it, your friends. So for me, that's, I would say that's two things, to perform on the big stage. First for my family, and then second for my friends who have been with me, like, almost all this journey. I know it's not easy for them to, like, you know, being together always, and, you know, because most of them came here because of football, and then, you know, and then to actually be by my side every single day, you know, through this journey and then sometimes pushing me even if I don't want to do something. So I would say just to be there at the World Cup, which I've been dreaming of, to make my family and my friends and my loved ones happy. So Qatar is just um, over 2 million people, but you have a lot of people coming in because it's World Cup and you have to welcome a lot of people. Over 3 million people will be joining you here in Qatar. Do you think Qatar is ready for the culture shock that they are going to receive during this World Cup? I mean, we have been ready since. Ever since like, we got a chance to host the World, to host the World Cup, we've just been ready to receive every, each, like, everyone who is coming here. We are so ready to, like, like, to accept everyone, you know, like different countries, different cultures. I mean, as I told you, I just can't wait for people to actually see like what Qatar is. Because people outside think, oh, Qatar is well cultured because of, you know, it's an Islamic country and then, oh, there are certain things that you cannot do here. But it's different. It's different. It's so like loving country. Like everyone who, who've never been to Qatar and then the moment he steps his, his way foot here, like go back with a different perspective of the country. So, for like, I don't know, two million people or like, I don't know, four million coming. Trust me, they're all, they're all gonna go back and then say different thing about the country. That's for sure. And I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we can't, we can't say anything bad about Qatar when you're around. Now I mean, like I'm, no, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. That's why I've been here like almost all my life. Because this country is, is be first it's beautiful. The people are nice. I mean, life is so easy here. So, I mean, there's, there's nothing I can say about this country, actually. <laughs> I mean, you can see from my smile, so. You've spoken about your love for Qatar and also the national team as well, but I want you to be honest with me and maybe honest um, with the people that will be watching this. If you get a chance to make this decision again, as in playing for Ghana or playing for Qatar, will you opt? For Ghana or Qatar? Truth will be told, I would choose Qatar. Like, I would choose Qatar like every single day in terms of like I told you before what they did for me and what they are like doing for my people and then maybe. So for me, deep inside I knew like I took the right decision. So if you're asking me to do it again, like even Android times, I'll do it like I'll choose Qatar over Ghana. Which, by the way, I'm not talking, <laughs> I'm not saying anything bad about my, my beloved country, Ghana. So, uh, if it's a decision to make again, I would choose Qatar over Ghana again. I just don't want you guys to think 
I sold my country and then went out to play for some, you know, some other country, which is not, I know, like on paper, it looks like, oh yeah, he chose, he chose money over his own country. I remember like when, when the news like broke out, like I naturalized for Qatar National, even though like many people in Ghana don't know my story, they don't even know me, they were judging me like saying, oh yeah, he follows the money and stuff. Nah. I just follow what I felt like was the right decision at that time. I mean, it still is, you know? So I just want, like, whoever is watching this, you know me, you don't know me. I'm just, just like anyone else, like, in that situation, you know? And I promise you, everyone in that situation will choose, like, what, like, would they would do what I did and then be proud of it. What situation was that? I mean, like, getting to choose over, like, your, your beloved country. And then, you know, as I told you earlier on, it's something that every kid in Ghana, like, dream, dream of playing for the national team. But I got a better chance to, you know, to play, like, for, for other country. And then I took it, and I, I will never regret it, even though I still love my country, which is Ghana. But and now I'm in the World Cup. Hopefully I'll be in the World Cup. <laughs> and then I got two countries that I'll be, you know, I'll be playing for the other, I'll be supporting the other. I'm sure you watch the Ghana national team a lot. You've mentioned that you watch the local matches as well. What do you make of the state of Ghana football now? I mean, in, in Ghana, my wish has always been like for the league to be better because I'm a huge Kotoko fan. I mean, I still, I still follow them and I, I was watching them even earlier on play against Kim Fesa, So, I mean, and I'm glad they won, so, which is 1-0. It could have been 5 or, <laughs> but for the, for the league to like actually improve, I think we always crying for the for this for like day one. We need sponsors in the league. They are like quality players in the league. If you watch in the league, sorry to say, I know people will say, oh, it's not it's not playing for Ghana. It's not why is he talking about the league and stuff. But the pitches again, for a player for for you to see the player's quality, you need a proper pitch to perform on it. So I think the government, the GFA and the football people can actually do do better. And we both know they can do better. So that's all my wish and my prayers for the for the Ghana League. For to give like other people a chance, you know, to actually enjoy doing what they love to do with the proper facilities and stuff. So yeah. I mean, everyone has his different stories, you know, coming like maybe someone brought him lie to him like oh there is a team here that is looking for a player and then or Dubai or I don't know Kuwait and so I mean it all depends on like who you're dealing with I promise you if a team actually wants you and like gave you like invitation to come like to the Arab countries and play he invited you so of course he's gonna have like he's gonna make sure like you're okay and stuff but I think most of the most of the boys they've been like dealing with the wrong wrong people like lying to them Taking the, um, uh, you know, like money and stuff, tell him that, oh, I'm going to take you somewhere to, to play. And then the guy will just be there and then ended up being stri stranded for no reason because someone lied to him. So that's why they find themselves in the difficult situations. Not because of the actual team, you know, invited a person, but someone somewhere just took the boy's money and then left him all alone by himself. So that's hard. I know that's hard, but yeah. So before I wrap up on this, and um, with World Cup just a few months away, one thing that we all pride ourselves in is singing the national anthem. Can you sing the Qatar national anthem? We want you to do that. Why are you putting me on spot like this? <laughs> Why are you putting me on the spot? Yeah, I can sing, but I'm not going to sing now. No, okay. I'm going to sing, wait. <laughs> wait, I'm, okay. Okay, I know where this question is. I know how to speak the Qatar national anthem, but I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to sing the Ghana national anthem. No, don't worry about I'm it. I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't. Don't worry about that. Don't worry no, I know how to sing. I know how to sing. We know it means a lot for um, Qataris, so kindly do us the honor. <laughs> oh, you put him on the spot. Okay. It's because sometimes you have to put him on the spot. What does it mean for the people? I mean, it's just. A way of them like singing to the to the president, you know, to the country, and to the people of the country. So and it's you know it's in Arabic and 
you know, I don't speak Arabic, but when they are singing, I do sing, so, yeah. So a line or two? <laughs> so the start, the first two is Kasaman, you know, Kasaman, and then they continue. See, you ask for a line or two, so that's it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Muntari Mohamed, thank you very much for speaking to us here on TV3. I'm sure it's the first time that you are speaking on a national television in, um, in Ghana here, so it's a pleasure talking to you. I mean, this is the first time I'm doing any interview. I <laughs> started from the field. Thank you for having me. It's like a huge, huge thing. So thank you very much. And hopefully many more interviews in the future. <laughs>